Hi everybody, today I'm going to be setting up a uh, fish tank and chiller for trout in the classroom. This is the kind of chiller that's an external chiller. It's called the Aqua Euro, 110th horsepower. Does a great job, it's quiet, uh, very nice unit. You want to, uh, if, if you want to use it, it also creates uh, more current for the fish, so they, they seem to like it. Um, a little bit different to set up than the other ones that are passive coolers that are inside the tank. I have here a nice new 20 gallon tall tank. This is the size we recommend. Now before you start, of course, everything has to be clean. And that means clean the inside of the tank, even if it's new. Wash it very well. You can use some mild soap. Just rinse it very well before you put any water in. You'll boil your gravel. All the parts need to be clean. Wash them in the dishwasher if you want, that's fine. And then rinse them again, do an extra rinse. Make sure there's no residue of any kind, any soap left on it, because that will kill fish. Um, as far as this chiller is concerned, it's a little better, in this case, a little bit easier if we put the filter in first. So I'm going to put the under gravel filter in. And the first thing is uh, to get a piece two pieces like this and you'll want to punch out this piece right here which is where the upright part goes so you cut punch that out then decide how it's going to go and in this case the, uh, the pump for this the little power head for this is going to go in the middle so I'm going to put that cut out piece down like this so it goes in this piece we leave the cut out piece in the second piece and just put it down, it doesn't matter what direction it goes because uh, it's all going to be filtered. Now, if we want it to filter on both sides, which we do, right here on these, there is a some cutouts. They're on the edge of the thing, and what it does is allow the water to go back and forth between them. I'm going to use these heavy-duty scissors to snip those off. You leave the legs. I hope you can see what I'm doing here. They're kind of cut out already. Just cut them off, break them off, and there you have that ready to go. You can even do the other ones, the last two. And that way the water can circulate between the two pieces. So they both have teeth on them. Do the same thing with this one. We'll be cutting the uh, little blocks out here. And that allows the water to circulate between the two pieces of the... You can just bend them with your hands, but sometimes they break these legs off. And these little legs are important for holding it up. And you can do without them, but it's better to have them. break these off. Ooh, those are hard. Sometimes they're a little tough to break, but we'll do it here. Oh, I want to come. So, so then they go in with the cutout part next to the cutout part. So we'll go in like this. That way the water can circulate between them. After you know where the filter is going to be, the next step is to put the upright base into the filter, snaps in, and then this long tube goes into that. Put that right back to where it's supposed to be, and get your pump. This is your power head or your uh, filter pump. You put it into that so that it goes right down in tight. And this is at least underwater that far. I actually will cut that right here so that the power head can go a little farther down. I 
Again, these heavy scissors are really nice for this kind of thing. You can also use an X-Acto knife or something like that for cutting this, this tubing. down in there and now this can go all the way down and fit in there tightly. Some pumps are uh, suction cupped onto the side, some are through the top. Remember this air hose is very important. It must be attached right here. I'm going to take this out and show you. The air hose must be attached right here. And the end of the air hose must be outside the tank. The air comes in through there as the water goes through and makes bubbles. If you don't have bubbles, there's something wrong. Please make sure you have lots of air going into your fish tank. The fish need it. So there is that uh, power head set up. Okay, so these filters are down here, they're right together, and then the gravel goes on top of that. But before we put the gravel in, we need to hook up our chiller. This is what keeps the water at 50 degrees, 50 degrees Fahrenheit, for the fish. This chiller has an in and an out. It also has an external pump, so you have a second pump in this. You have the filter pump and you have the chiller pump. I'm going to put this chiller pump on the tank over here and secure it tightly. This is a much bigger pump than the filter pump. The water for this comes in the bottom of this and goes out this opening here. In the bottom, out here. So when it goes out it has to go in to the chiller. So we're going to hook this from here right across like this into the chiller. And I'll push that down and tight. Now, this long hose, this, this hose isn't that long, but I know that not, not many of you have a perfect setup where you can put it right where you want it. You may need a longer piece of hose. Unfortunately the hose isn't very flexible but you can't hurt it like those black tubes on the internal chillers which you can hurt by bending them. These uh, you can't hurt unless you kink them. You want to be careful they don't kink. You also want to be careful that these are clean. They have to be cleaned before you do it. I recommend a 10% bleach solution and then a lot of rinsing. The outlet, the water goes from here through this chiller where it's chilled and then it has to go back into the tank. So the outlet is on the other side and uh, it tightens on there and it can just go down into the tank. That creates the nice current for the fish when it's running. Okay, that's it. We have this all set up. What we want to do next, of course, is put the gravel in. Clean gravel that you've boiled for 10 minutes. Uh, then you want to put in the other things you need, like the thermometer, and uh, that should do it. When you plug this in, the water, and turn this on, the water will be moving in two directions at once. First of all, this littler pump with the very important air intake, the smaller power head will take the water down through the gravel by pulling up here and push the water out there, creating a current. Above the little current. Meantime, the bigger pump sucking water in here and pushing it through the chilling unit and then back into the tank through this hose. You will always want to turn this off. Uh, in fact, both off when you're feeding or when you're placing the eggs in there.
there'll be a lot of water swirling around in here and the eggs may get bumped against something. The fish won't be able to find the food uh, until they get to be good eaters. So, so that's the way the Aqua Euro tank is set up. Uh, remember if you have any questions call me. I'm George Pilling and you have my number uh, here in the Kawea Fly Fishers area. Thank you very much. Okay, the next step is to add the gravel. 20 gallon tank takes a fair amount of gravel. You want it at least an inch and a half thick. That's a nice mixture of various sizes. Got some big ones in there and some little ones. Just like the bottom of a real stream. Your gravel, of course, has been boiled. If it was used last year, or even if it's new, it could have some diseases inside it. You want to make sure the gravel goes all the way to the corners. Take some of the bigger rocks and put them up front. And uh, I always add a couple of cobbles just to make it nice and give the fish, when they are fish, a little place to hide. Again, these are clean rocks in boil 10 minutes. Keep them good and clean. All right, so that's all there is to putting the gravel in. Just make sure it covers the filter everywhere. And uh, there you go. The next step is to add water. Just need a bucket of water. A good clean bucket, of course. And we will fill it up with water. If you're doing this with children around, you can say, well, how many of these three gallon buckets, or even how many of these 13 liter buckets, will it take to fill a 20 gallon tank? Interesting math problem. So filling the tank is a good thing to get your kids to do. If you have some around, or some older kids who used to be in your class, whoever's hanging around when you're doing this. You can see that I filled it very close to the top. You want to make sure that the pumps are in the water. That keeps them cool and they're designed for that. Uh, you use tap water, by the way. Don't go and buy special water. It's bad for the fish. You want tap water. The tap water has the correct minerals in it and the tap water in Visalia, at least, is excellent and very good for this. Now, the tap water does have a little bit of chlorine in it. So, all you have to do to get rid of the chlorine is wait a day. One day, the chlorine will dissipate. If you can't wait, in other words, if you have some, you're adding some water when the fish are in there, then you use the dechlorinator. They're very di various different kinds. By the way, if you run out of any supplies, if your power head stops working, whatever happens, if you're, if I'm not available, hey you got to get it fixed, go down to, to Petco. Uh, Petco in Visalia, the manager there is named Dale, and he gives a discount of 20 to 25 percent to drop in the classroom. So here we are filled up with water. You'll see that pouring the water in moves some gravel around. You can reach in. Never have lotion on your hands when you reach into your tank. You can reach in and rearrange the gravel a little bit to get it ready. Lotion on your hands can kill fish. Rinse your hands, wash everything. Everything that goes in the tank must be washed. Okay? Another thing, you can see that this table is stressed. This is heavy. 20 gallons of water. One pint of water weighs a pound. I'll let you figure that out. A liter of water weighs a kilogram. So your kids can figure all this out and make sure you have it on a sturdy surface. I would not leave this on here for very long. Okay, thank you. Okay, once you get your tank filled and everything looks good, you want to make sure everything's connected right and then you can plug in your two pumps and the chiller. Now, I'm going to plug in the power head first, that's the 
filter pump. Notice that there are lots of bubbles coming out. That's what we want. There's a little current and lots of bubbles. That gives the fish oxygen. Then we'll plug in the big power head, which runs the uh, water through the chiller. And you can see the water, the bubbles there first, and now there's water going through. Everything's fine. Now, you may have to fill this unit with water. To do that, you pour water in the in valve and make sure everything's going to circulate. It's kind of like priming the pump. So I know water's going out there, going, going in there and coming out here. Got a nice current there. Not too strong, but good, good for the fish. They like that. Before plugging in the chiller, which will cool the water, we need to make sure that water is running through it freely and there are no bubbles coming out. It should be completely full of water. They say to let it run, the pump run, for 30 minutes before you do this. So I've let the pump run for 30 minutes. There's water going through it. Another thing, all of these cords are plugging directly into your outlet or your power strip. If they have a drip of water on them that can follow the cord down, they could short this out and cause the circuit breaker to pop off. So you want to make sure that there's a loop in your cord and that the plug is higher than that loop. That way the drips will drip off it. Water and electricity do not mix. Okay, I've plugged in the chiller. It's registering the actual temperature, 62. Uh, I want to set the temperature here to be a particular temperature, 50 degrees for our fish. So I hold this for five seconds, the set button. And then I can press up and down to set the temperature. Set again, and it's done. We will check it, of course, with our thermometer um, in, the, in the tank as you, as you use it. There it is. It's ready to go. Just wait for the eggs to come.